If it wasn't Tracy booking me, I wasn't coming to Baltimore. Yeah, bro. See, I graduated from high school in 2010. Mm. So, like, those were, like, prime years. Like, mm. Tracy is still in Baltimore throwing Doing promotion. big shows. See what I'm saying? She was the shit back then. She was the shit back then. And she still the shit. Oh, yeah, that's hard. How was those shows back in Baltimore? I remember when, my first one when Tracy done came and got her from the airport. She had police with her. And, uh... Police went like, I don't know if he was in detail, cause I think he was in security type clothing. But when in the van riding with us on the way to the spot, he said, don't y'all get now ho out there club. You know, we big in age. Mm. That's what the police said? Yes. Damn. He telling us on the way to the spot. But don't get now ho out there club. We got a high percent in the age. Everybody in the van. He f Whole mood up. God damn. He's we didn't want to fly back tonight. <laughs> Why would you say that to the guest? Like you, fucking, he wasn't getting no ass. Oh no, he he spooked us though. He couldn't get no. He was a no p getting nigga, bro. Back like to the hotel, sleep. Hey, we got this motherfucking red eye. I can't even post this <laughs> on Instagram to promote. <laughs> I ain't going to part of one. <laughs> damn. Why would the security say that? I said, boy, he fucked us up. He damn sure fucked us up. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So, shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So, if you see me on the gram, posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So, look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way. You know, like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. A uh, name and a, and, a, and a solid history of a of, of body of work. Um, he could probably easily make anywhere from five to 10000 a month. <laughs> Mm. Easily, <laughs> he's like easily though. That's a low ball. That's on a low ball, ball. Yeah. I'm. T on one play. Bro, I told this nigga. I said, Damn. "Yo, you ain't been watching T Pain or T Grizzly?" Nigga said, "Man, I just." He said, he, the "Nigga said I stream. I don't even use my name." Yeah, nah, nah, nah. He gotta do that. He can even do some shit where he's like review niggas' music and have niggas pay him a certain fee to submit that music and he review it live type shit. Like, bro, you can peak this unlimited shit. That this damn, I was just trying to rechain my name to some more <laughs> bullshit. Remember? What you what you streaming off for? Of? What you streaming off for? Of? On PS5? No, I play on PC. Oh, so you what sprint streaming with a PS5 won't get the same revenue as a PC? No, yeah, it, no, it will. No, yeah, it will. Yeah, PS5 is like easier than Xbox too, though, because you can um you can download Twitch directly to your PS5, buy the little PS5 camera, plug it into your PlayStation, and you're good to go. Xbox niggas gotta buy a whole bunch of additional shit in order to do that, but you you can do that shit, nigga, immediately. Damn. Well, right. the game we record? Man, let's get this shit started, man. Damn. That was Mr. Bankshot on the line, y'all. Appreciate you, bro. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Mm. yeah, man. I'm trying to tell you, bro. And if you need help, y'all know how to do it. Cause I could I could get him the I'm about to say if y'all um if y'all need help, I can yeah. hey, we can pull up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nah, bro. I mean, that's light. That's super light. I mean, and my my content look good too. Not to like 
do that. But my yeah. constant look, I, I make sure you look good. No, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I make sure you good. Yeah. Straight up, Agreed. I ain't even Like, nigga, that'd be, that'd be an honor. Like, nigga, what? Nigga, I help OJ and Juice Man set up his stream, nigga. Like, <laughs> nigga I, yeah, that's crazy. I make my own money on that. They gonna see that, like, oh, shit, Hey, bro, come hook out with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nigga, I help you out, nigga. Hey, bro, how much you charge to come hook the more? Nigga, yeah. you ain't gotta ever yeah. work. Ooh, I'm gonna make my own money. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna make sure I'm good. That's real. It ain't never free, because I'm gonna make sure I'm good. That's, that's one real. thing I learned. Damn. Yo, bro, it's yo, wait. So I know y'all, we already started. Uh first of all, um, shout out to the uh black owned tequila, Los Hermanos. Shout out to the black brothers out of Baltimore. Mm. I'm recording out of uh the Procreative Studio. If you need a a, a studio to record in, my man is looking for clients for now, because he's gonna go crazy and he's gonna be turning you niggas away. I promise that. He's saying no. But I'm telling you, he's going to be turning you niggas away. <laughs> Yo, but J Hill, J Hill Podcast, we're in the building. This is one of the moments. I'm going to take my time with this because I was just telling him off camera that, man, I'm never going to forget where I came from. I'm never going to forget the dreams that I had mm -hmm. and the people that I wish I could be talking to and just look at God, man. Like, this is insane. Like, um, and to all you Atlanta niggas, man, let me say this straight up. You niggas is privileged, bro. Damn. You niggas just be walking around with legends and just like just regular, like, just, like you're just used to it. I'm from Baltimore, and we respect our legends. And I got a legend sitting on his motherfucking chair next to me. OJ the Juice Man is in the building, man. What hey, up, what it do, J Hill, man? You know we already rocking like cut out stacking, man. You know <laughs> you already done put me down. No, nah, down really, for life man, now. Yeah, we here for yeah, real. Thirsty. We like, yo. I'm just curious as a fan, like, do you feel like you OJ the Juice Man? Like, is does it feel like you are who you are? Do you know who you are, nigga? I just, I mean, somewhat, but now I'm just OJ from fucking Boulder Creek. The little nigga, fat nigga from Boulder Creek, light skinned fat nigga with pretty eyes from Boulder Creek. No way. Sun Valley apartment, used to swim in the damn creek. No way. That's who you see yourself as. Yeah. First of all, nigga. I'm not from Atlanta. True. I've been here for a, a quick second. Okay. <laughs> I asked my producer, I said, yo, tell me about OJ. He said, bro, I th he like, he from the east side. You from the yo, east side. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really know too much about the mm -hmm. east side. I'm from the west side. So, okay. like, you know what I'm saying? I'm assuming it's just, it was just hood shit, okay. hood politics. Yeah. But he was like, man, that nigga was that nigga in the streets. Damn. That's what he said. That's hard. Your producer, and he from Atlanta? Yeah, he a Atlanta yeah. nigga. Yeah, <laughs> for so, sure. So, like, I'm from Baltimore, so, like, yeah. I'm not, like, a street nigga, but yeah, I know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah, hood. yeah, yeah, for sure. So when he said that, I'm like, I know just coming up, it was certain niggas, even in sports, in every aspect of life, mm -hmm. you got niggas that, like, was them niggas that everybody not might not recognize, but the niggas that we recognize recognize, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah, true. And it be them niggas that really don't, Get the worldwide recognition, mm -hmm. but if you ask the niggas that get the worldwide recognition, they'll say, "Oh shit, him." Yeah, true. And I'm wondering, from your perspective, you m maybe not being as big as the counterparts or even like the people, because you was on Double XL before, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, was I was on Double XL with Nip it was me, Nipsey, J Cole, Big Sean, Freddie Gibbs, Wiz Khalifa, Fidonis, Peel, and. Uh, Think one more dude, bro. And I'm a just I'm I'm a fan, so I'm asking for just straight from being a fan that everybody you just named kind of got they big deals. They big, yeah, yeah, true, true. You not getting that same recognition, like how, like does that ever like hurts thing? Like talk to me about that. Uh, you know, kind of sorta. I just be looking at it like, damn, why the fuck they don't fuck with my shit, like. But it, I guess you know at the time when when I was boom I had the right marketing scheme I had the big team behind a nigga and then once all that shit uh, transpired and was no longer dealing with that side I really didn't know where to put marketing and promotion to keep my name or keep my face in these folk my shit in these folks face I, I I really didn't learn that part so what I was doing was still putting out music but without the right marketing and promotion behind it. A lot of eyes of ten to miss it, but the ones that were really, really fucking with me, like staying on me, they knew I was dropping it. But I needed more of the mass majority 
than just the regular hardcore. I wanted to keep my hardcore fans, but I needed a broader a broader vision to get more people. But I couldn't. I didn't know where to put the funds at to get it. So how in your mind, right? Because you the like it's first hand experience. Mm-hmm. How do you go from here to here? But see, I've been like that since I was young. I, I niggas always fuck with me in the hood, even even when I'm back started with fifty slabs. Uh, you start small, then you get big, but then you might get knocked down to where you got to start back over. Mm. So in the midst of that, I learned my knockdown situation from being in the street. I done been up, knocked back down, got back up, knocked back down, got back up, knocked back down. I done been through that so many times. So with the muse, I'm like, I could just retry it again. Mm. What happened? Uh, Bad paperwork, me pulling up without a lawyer. Me pulling up with a lot of lawyer not knowing. I come from standing on the corner watching the water bug go by every day to he goes some paperwork. All right, boom. But you know, at one week I'm diagnosed with diabetes. Next week I'm shot eight times. Mm. But I got these folks on my ear saying, let me get you a deal. So I'm like, hey, you know what? When I get out of the hospital, this go around because I see it's kind of going bad for me. Let me try something different. Went straight up there with a acknowledgement of thinking I'm getting into a good deal. I didn't know, I ain't take no lawyer. I was just loyal. And I signed right then on the spot. And this is label or artist? I, I signed to a label, uh, independent label that had a, got a major deal, like, uh, deal, major label situation off of me signing to the independent label. So, when I could have went directly to the major label, but I went, got tricked to a sub and the sub got the major deal off. Me signing to the sub. Damn. You coming from the streets, though. Because a lot of things in the streets, as much as like we want to talk about the negative shit, it's some positive things that come from the streets. Mm-hmm. Loy- I feel like loyalty is one of them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And this sense of genuineness. True. Like, in the streets, you would know if a nigga fuck with you or not. Exactly. It's not like that in the industry. Not like that. You wouldn't know. You experiencing that firsthand in the industry when it's so different in the streets. Mm-hmm. How was that? Mm. If you could think back to that time. I don't know, cause I'm the type, it take like one time with a burn me. And then I'm damn near for sure not fucking with you no more. Like so with coming from the street and figuring out how certain people is and then getting in the industry. They the industry, you know, they kinda keep it hid for so long. It only stay hid for so long and then that shit start coming out. And then it's like just change it. You be seeing nigga change. And I don't know if it's cause the money. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Cause I know I, I ain't never had to be through that. Like if I get a lump sum and my day ones or Niggas I'm really fucking with. As soon as I get the money, now when, when I'm broke, I'm with you every day. We everything. We, we, as soon as I get the cheese, I'm out of the. Nah, I ain't never did that. But how was that for you though? That had to hurt, bro. Yo, at yeah. the time, come on, yeah. Like. I, yeah. Now feeling with feelings, my feelings. I had to re- re- learn to remove my feelings because I used to get in my feeling like God damn. I remember when I was hot, bro, come and ask me for some shit. I get it away free. I ain't know I could charge. Mm. I'm thinking we on some buddy buddy shit. Yeah, we from Atlanta. Whoop the whoop, certain artists. Hey, yeah, yeah, I don't mind doing a feature with such and such. I like your music. Show the heart. Get on the feature, boom, free. Oh, I'm at my peak, but I don't know I'm at my peak because I ain't no blow up and then my head blow up. You know what I'm saying? I still San Valley OJ when I was quarter brick, half a brick. You know what I'm saying? So when the favor will probably be returned, the favors never returned because of the fact. Niggas just really ain't probably respect me out the gate. But at the time of me being hot, he knew he needed something. So then when I look at it like, damn, nigga got down fish fried me like that. No, bro. Yeah. That shit. That sure hurt. Make you wanna hurt something, but then you know, hey, you hurt something, <laughs> you already the right way. Yeah, going to jail, sir. Mm. But how do you even we that's something that we learn. Again, and you could paint, you could help me with the timeline too. That's something that we learned later on in life. Mm-hmm, this is years ago, mm-hmm. like almost what we could say almost twenty, mm, like seventeen, seventeen, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. almost twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. So you're nowhere near as mature then as you are now. Nah, yeah, I was blind as a fool then. So I'm thinking about it being immature, so mm-hmm. to say. True. 
how did what stopped you from going a different route or a street route when you feel like somebody fucks you over? Mm, me probably back then. I probably would go and consult with my sister, but I'm flaming hot when I'm consulting with her. And, you know, she helped me jump over the hurdles. Like, that shit really ain't worth it. Yeah, I know you mad as hell and looking at XYZ being stolen, but, bro, you been doing this your whole life. You going to re-get it. Mm. So I always took that accountability. Uh, then my older sister ain't got nothing but me and her. Just me and her. And with my, um, my, my, my half-brother. But and my my real sister, oh yeah, that's all I got. So I take accountability from when she tell me some, do it or don't do it. I'm a kind of roll with, I factor out of, do it or don't do it from her. Mm. Outside of you saying not having a lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm curious because like we men, mm -hmm. outside of that part, because just being honest, that could still be like. Somebody did you wrong. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, if we eliminate that, I'm just wondering, is there any other ownership that you take as far as the career was? Mm. Of the, what, how it went south? Not really, because I was doing everything I was supposed to do. It just when, when it was time to calculate that cheat, seeing the splits, like manager getting 50%, probably 20%, you getting 50% on my show. I'm paying the road manager twenty percent of the the back end when I didn't appoint the road manager. The manager appointed the road manager, so the manager supposed to be getting twenty percent and whatever she paid the road manager, that what he get. So in actuality, I was paying fifty percent to the road manager. I mean, fifty percent to the head manager and twenty percent to the road manager. I mean, I'm only walking away with thirty percent. Wait, who set this team up though? The, they did. The people I was signed to set this up. I didn't know. I'm coming straight from the street. That's crazy. That's insane, bro. Mm. Like, even, Why, so, wait. You're making music now, mm -hmm. again. If, I don't know, maybe I'm a high but like, you get fucked that, that way. I'm like, fuck music. I be like that. I get, I get in the, mo the modes, too. I definitely get in the modes. But at the same time, me doubling back to the distributor, uh, um, what it's called, the uh, access portal to see how much money my music that I put out besides that label been making and I get to withdraw the funds and shit. I'm like, man, there's still some money in this shit I can grab. But really, the, the big money I've been took. So you don't get nothing off of none of the songs that, that we listen. Yeah, that first album, the other side of the trap, which consists of make the trap say, "Hey, I'm getting money, copper chicken, <sighs> oh uh, Nami, um, Batman." I think it was fourteen records on that damn good records too. Are you the only one that's not getting money though? Like, cause I'm, think, I'm assuming that the producers didn't get paid either. But I'm assuming other artists wouldn't be getting paid either or like, bro, we man, I mean, we could, whatever you want, and we cut out. Um, like, so for example, like Gucci, like, was this the same for everybody or? But see, I was the only person signed to the label. Right. That label. Yeah. Gucci wasn't signed, so I couldn't really see yeah. his structure. But like, even like Shorty Low, like I'm thinking like, they, I know he probably wasn't signed to the label, but I'm like. I'm just thinking that because at a time this was an issue. Like yeah. artists wasn't getting paid. Yeah, no, nah, for real. So I'm just wondering, like, have you talked to any of your peers? Like, was this only like were you an isolated situation or no? Nah, nobody, this... nobody really would give me the game room on it. I ain't have nobody to give me game on. It. I had to learn on my own. But I feel like a lot of artists had the similar experience, though, right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming. I'm mm -hmm. assuming like a lot of because a lot of at, it was a time where niggas was getting fucked. Nah, for real. And like, but we still seen niggas come above. And that, that leads me to this question. Um, I think I've seen, I think Thug said this, Free Thug. I think he was like, um, like your first deal was always going to be like fucked up. Like it's always going to be bad. Something like that. Maybe so. I've heard artists Maybe so. say like, yeah. man, your first yeah, deal yeah, always yeah. going to be the worst. But yeah, True. And then it's up to, you know, I, I kind of got dropped. Well, I didn't get dropped, but I got away from everything they had going after my first album and find out money whoop the whoop. 
I ain't want to hear shit. I'm 30, 32 entertainment. Y'all can't call me for nothing. Mm. So why you ain't, I'm just curious, we still talking about that. Why you ain't just keep going? Like, you could have kept going. Um, After this situation? Yeah. Yeah, I did, but, you know, I'd be back and forth, one foot in, one foot out. And you set the marketing, so mm-hmm. that's a hard thing. Mm-hmm. But if you bubbling like that, do you really need marketing? Like, bro, you was the hottest yeah. thing smoking. I'm from, listen, I don't think, I need to understand, I'm from Baltimore. So it was different. Like, a lot of niggas was listening to, like, I don't know. Like, we was listening to y'all niggas. Like, y'all was, like, godfather to us. Damn. Like, you feel me? I'm being sure straight up. Damn. So in my mind, it's like, you ain't need no marketing, nigga. Like, shit, I needed that money. That motherfucker crashed on the nigga. I needed to be revived. You for real? You yeah, think that? Yeah. I, that? In my heart, that's what I felt. Yeah, for sure. I'm thinking you could have dropped the tape out the trunk. I was doing them. The motherfucker wasn't really getting noticed like need to be. Do you think you got too big hit it? Nah. Because it was a time where niggas were selling tapes out the trunk. Was you doing that? Yeah, nah, I wouldn't even sell it. I'd get mine away free. I got the 20 CD uh, burn towers. I was burning my own CD. After you made... Make the try to say, hey, I was still burning all my own. Giving them away for free. Giving away CD for free. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I cared about on my CD was my booking number. It's no way I'm seeing OJ the Juice Man on the corner giving me a fucking mixtape for free. Might not see me on the corner. Or I'm in the spot by the end, so you'll have to be on call the phone, pull up to the spot to get some, and I'm going to give you a CD and the miss you walking out. Or I'm going to leave CDs in the nearest convenience store. Okay. I'm going to be the ones putting them bitches in the store. They for free. Now, the store sell them to you. That's on y'all. I orchestrated a free deal. Niggas want to get grab a CD, they can have my CDs for free. Now, the store charged you. That was on y'all. But the CD was free. Damn. That's yeah. crazy. I had my own burners and shit. And I was getting that shit away free. That's crazy, bro. You could, like, see, even then I'm thinking, you probably make mad money. Out the trunk in it, yeah. I had them, I just had a majority of the rappers in Texas were getting they real money out the trunk selling they CD. Yo, looking back on it, like, just like, what do you feel when you look back on this, bro? Um, I mean, I, it wasn't nothing I wouldn't change, but not going major, staying independent, waning it out because it was around the corner. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know it. You feel like a lot of artists, uh, it's like impatient, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of artists mm-hmm. go through. But like that I too. said, I'm diagnosed with diabetes. One week they telling me, "Hey, you gotta stick yourself with this. You got to keep your sugar where it need to be, or you can die, or you can go in a diabetic coma mm. to hey, getting shot eight times the next week." So I'm like, man, let me try something else. What happened? Like, why you get shot eight times? On some robbery, robbery gone bad. Nigga try to rob you? Yeah. What you try to? You said no or something? How was that? <laughs> yeah, it was some no type shit. Like, uh, pull up. They Wayne supposed to be handling business. It wasn't a business. They was dead or raw. Goddamn. Man. How the situation occurred, the only way to get what I had was to shoot me up. But when they shoot me, I don't got nothing out there like Jim Carrey. You remember uh, um, the movie The Mask? Yeah, The Mask. <laughs> when he. <laughs> Trying to dodge them bullets. Yeah, I'm out there like that. Trying to dodge them motherfuckers. You think you dodging? But them motherfuckers hit. hit. <laughs> <laughs> this then one crazy. hit low on my right leg. Now I can't feel that right leg. I'm like, oh, shit. The Jim Carrey go away. Like, oh, I got to hop now. But I still got what I got, though. You feel me? Boom, get in the car. And have who, I, who I'm around with take me down the street to meet my mama. Them. Mama them pull up, pick me up, hop to the car one foot all the way to the car. Boom, get in the car, take the shit to take the shit to the house, go to the hospital, boom. Get in Nigga, the hospital on a Sunday. They got in the hospital on a Sunday. They put me out Wednesday. I did a show Friday. Wait, before we even get the the show, nigga, you risk your life to put whatever you had at, at home and then go to the hospital. Y'all niggas is crazy. Let me ask you this. Looking back at that, right? Was it a chance you could have just gave them niggas the shit? Yeah, nah, fuck that. Get them what? They're going to get this shit while I'm dead. You're going to, have to kill me right here, right now. And then get it. Nash yours. Why? Yeah, nah, you finna, you going to get up off of it now. And I'm going to be fucking broke. 
That ain't worth your life, though. I don't know. Maybe at that time it might have wouldn't, but that wasn't how I was looking at it. I can't, hell no, nah, I can't start over. Mm, that's crazy, bro. That's some street shit. Yeah. Sure no. Do you, you don't wish you would have did something differently now? True. I wish I would have got down, stayed my goof ass in school and graduated. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I wish the fuck I did. <laughs> but in that situation, you don't yeah. wish you would have just gave it to him? Is that nah, it's like hell nah. it's not worth so it, is he to die or die for this shit back this, this for me and I ain't telling you die for your shit. If it's in the fucked up and I'm giving you the predicaments uh it could be a fucked up robin when you gotta die for your shit. Like if you can't give it up. They gonna kill you and take it anyway. Mm. Or how I did it will eat the bullets and keep my shit. Nigga, no, you're fortunate. You're blessed. You're lucky. Nigga, you got shot eight times. I mean. I only ask that because, like, I feel like you could get that back. Whew. Or is that a nigga just you not get it in back, the street? It's going to be hard. God, you, you might be the, the nigga robber next to get back with this fuck nigga done took. You the robber now. You know what this made me think of, bro? We just talking about this. That's real life shit situations, right? I probably can't understand that. I ain't never, I ain't trying to be in that situation. True. However, we talk about this rap shit. A lot of these rap niggas or the industry and whole as a whole, this I don't understand this. They keep trying to make the comparison or make the rap industry streets. No, you can't. And from do it. that's the, the the story you just told me. Ain't rap ain't never gonna do that. No. Mm -mm. Now rap, they gonna rob you, but it's without the shooting, it's without guns, and if you're a retaliation type person, you're gonna go to jail for getting robbed in the industry by one of these music is it's for millions. The little shit I got robbed for with me in the street. Mm. Now I could have turned to the robber for the millions in the industry and shot some shit back for stealing that kind of money, but do I want to go to jail for it? Mm. Or just try again? So I would assume, I'm just curious, you don't particularly care about rap beef? Nah, hell no. Nah. Never have, never indulged in it. Really don't even listen to the, uh, the two, if they... Uh, this record and each other. I don't get three fucks. Damn, because you really had to live that street yeah, life. Yeah, and they rapping. We ain't putting that kind of shit on. If it's beef, we ain't putting it on wax for something to happen. You gonna recollect back to me, guys? You rapped about it. I just said fuck this nigga. I'll do this, do that, and then shout to die tomorrow. And you might not even be the one that did it, but they come to get your ass. Cause you just rapping about y'all was just the. That's the only beef he had. Mm. What do you think the change happened over time? Because it's a lot of niggas that really was in the streets, but still playing the industry games. Yeah. Now, if you think about like with the biggie, biggie them shit, yeah, they were beefing. They might have made a diss record or two, but shit, niggas died behind that shit. Yeah. Niggas not here right now. Just imagine if Tupac or Biggie was still alive right now to still make music. Mm. Besides the beef, and you got your buddies in your head, oh, we gonna get that fuck nigga when we see him. Besides all that, you you fucked around and didn't think about none of that. You just kept it real. Like, you know what? I ain't finna shoot it out with this nigga. I'm going on on. But they ain't think that way, and the niggas who sit beside him ain't help him think that way neither. Mm. And maybe that some of the niggas who sit beside him right now to this day, like, damn, I shouldn't have. I would have, I could have, I should have. But shit, they not too possible. Damn right, they ain't gonna be able to make the raps he would make. They was just the, my buddy from the hood who I had brought around. You feel like, I'm just curious, this is crazy, bro. I got mad questions. Do you feel like um, you witness artists, won't have to say any names, and I don't care about that. Have you witnessed artists rap about other people's lifestyles? Yeah, fucking yeah. For shit, sure. 
Still going to this day. You feel like niggas <laughs> right about your lifestyle? Fucking right. <laughs> you damn right, nigga. Fucking right. I ain't going to sugarcoat you down and cap you down and lie and say, no, no, hey, hey, fucking yes. You ain't never think about calling niggas out? Like, bro. No, could they going to say I'm the hater. That's true. Man, you, you hang, bro. That's a hang ass shit you doing. So I don't I hate comments, bad comments. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Nah. But if it's real, it's real. True. But the outside people don't understand that. I was about to. I saw, that's just, bro. This is this, this is crazy. I'm like, yeah, like if y'all saw my mind, it's like I'm just like but super the happy. Outside world don't give three foot. They like who they like. Yo, so that makes me think of like this Drake shit that's going on. And I was one of these people, right? Okay. Shout out to my guy Wayne though. He broke it down so well for me. A lot of people feel like Drake has put a lot of artists on. We talk about, um, let's say like. Rick Ross, Future, like people, it's a narrative mm. that people think that he's the one that's bringing them the hits. Okay. My guy Wayne, though, he's a music executive. He worked for QC now. He was just breaking down like how Future had a, like his influence to Atlanta was insane way mm -hmm. before Drake. Mm -hmm. Same Rick Ross been doing his thing way before Drake. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Drake might be the bigger artist, but people overlook the, in, the actual influence that Future contributed to Drake. Mm. I was wondering, like, what do you think about that? Like, for not them per se, but like those artists, like the artists that might have a big name, they come into a city like Atlanta or another uh, small city, and they the ones that really win by getting the features on the niggas that's really hot. That's really hot. Yeah, that, but see, I had to learn that in the music too to, to go back to early in the interview when I was saying, see, at my peak, I ain't know what to look for. I'm getting nigga shit free, not knowing. But in the game of music right now, yes, the the hottest shit that's going. Oh, best believe they coming to knock on your door. Now whether you charge them or on some favor for a favor, return a favor, or some buddy buddy shit, that's on you to determine how you want to play. It. Because niggas want that buzz when you buzz, and nigga want a piece of it because they feel like your shit gone. He'll accumulate the traffic to they shit. Mm. So if this person you getting uh, who's hot as fuck got seventy million followers or whatnot on probably two three platforms, seventy here, twenty here, fifty here, this one nigga who finna pay you or either beg you or either trick you out this feature, he's trying to accumulate goddamn some of them seventy. Mm. Cause whatever traffic come to him accumulate the streams, streams, streams equal money. But do you think oftentimes that smaller artists lose? But or it's times where they win though. Sometimes it is where they win. It's true. Like I can say, like with that Drake and Future, both of them help each other career at sure. whatever point that was at the time. Cause Future always make good ass songs, good ass albums. I really not a huge Drake fan, but it be song for song that I might like that I that made me like from playing the hell out that motherfucker. And then when them niggas do something joint together, it might be at a time where one of them was peeking down a little bit and boom, now they back explosion. You feel me? Mm. Shit like that. Damn. So do you think, um, I guess like Drake benefited off the like the Atlanta culture? Somewhat, for sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't grab a lot of shit from now in 21, future. Nigga, he says the whole you uh, stand Atlanta, Vegas, thing, like oh yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, that's his yeah, whole spiel. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, right. he I, did I, this. I, I liked the album too. I think he swayed uh, from like Houston and uh, Atlanta. That was the album he did, Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. I, it was a couple songs on that. Like, damn, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Cause like, I, it's like I don't ever, I didn't ever think about it until like I was we were talking about you, and I'm like, mm -hmm. you were really like that nigga in the streets that niggas probably respected, and. Somebody came along and like, man, let me use this as a benefit to me. True. True. And that's sick. True. I wanted to ask you this too. You get uh you've been on this 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 podcast, and this is kind of contradicting, but whatever. You were on this podcast, Ryan. And I feel like um every time we mention OJ, there's use in respect, it's like we almost got a mission Gucci. True. 
But I mean, that gotta be annoying for you though, right? Like, I mean, or I don't know. It might not be. I don't know. Shit. It get annoying sometimes. Like, God damn, everybody, me, but bro, bro, <laughs> I fuck with bro, but God damn, I, I wouldn't never sign the. Group. <clears throat> I wouldn't never sign the ten seventeen. That's just been my buddy forever. Mm. Whatever he needed me to do, I was there. Mm. Do you feel like um you lived in his shadows a lot over the years though? Mm, not really, not really, nah. Cause I feel like I made a stain in it for myself, just being OJ and not trying to do what everybody else was doing at the time. Mm. How do you think you did that? Oh uh, shit! If you, if you know my music, I ain't rapping by number, selling some, <laughs> <laughs> selling some, and making some money. That's it. Damn man, yeah, where are you now, bro? Like, how you feeling? How you liking this, bro? Like, what's going on? I mean, I, it's, I'm cool with it right now. I can't. Complain. I ain't never been no complaining. I damn sure ain't gonna cry. Can't cry about it. But I just take my day, day for day. I don't recollect the past and goddamn barely look towards the future. But see, I got my motto set up. I look for the bad before I look for good in any situation going on. Mm. I look for the bad shit first and maybe the good shit out there, but I'm going for bad first. Why is that? Because I done been through so much bad shit. That's how it go for me. Bad shit first, and then a little good. I feel like I was like that before, and I think, I mean, I'm still like that, but I'm trying to get out of that. I'm like, I'm like I'm that. Getting the shout in of the stick. I'm know, just trying to life. get out of that. I feel like sometimes, because I'm trying to, this whole manif manifestation shit and all this energy thing, but you hear, they say, like, there's things you. The uh the stuff you give your you consume your mind is what actually happens. Mm. So like if you continue to think about the bad, bad shit, it's gonna keep, yeah, it's gonna keep happening. True, but see, even when I think about the good shit, as soon as I start like oh, I'm everything possible, everything possible, boom, bad out the gate. Fuck being positive. I'm <laughs> fucking bad every time. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I, I knew that. I knew the stick with my fucking good. Facts. Every time, never fails me. Fuck. <laughs> no nah, facts. I'm with you. Shit. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> no oh, thanks, man. Yo, how is it like a regular day being o like OJ the Juice Man? Do you still get right? Like, do is it hard to still move around? Nah, I still move around. I, I be moving around funny too. You might see me at the gas station. I got on some fucking Crocs. I got on a do rag. I got on. Like a piss dot dog piss dot t shirt, goddamn, and some basketball shirt. In the in the old lad 300, nigga looking like, damn, this nigga in the 2024, this nigga in the 2009, Christ. Don't know then my ski skirt. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> my, my, my low ski ski skirt, you ain't looking at this car. <laughs> you you ain't, you on in. This car too old. You is not specialized on this car. Mm. This motherfucker old, car. Do you, bro, the success you had, does it make it hard to kind of like live as a regular person? Because I'm a, mm -hmm. like, you can't, we can't see somebody that we deem as a legend, we can't see them do regular shit because now you broke. You put like that nigga yeah, down yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, true. What I don't like too, like if I'm with my kid, I'm out on the regular, we shopping in Walmart. Bro, you see I'm with these folk. Do not be slick, sneaking, following me around Walmart. And then by the time I'm headed to the restaurant, I'm on the tour aisle picking them some out. You pop out, hey, bro, you you OJ too, man? I'm like, yeah, bro, that me. I seen you had already been following me down a couple aisles. He's like, man, I had one, but I know I seen your kids and shit, but bro, I had to go on the ask you, bro. Think I take a picture? Nigga, no. Nigga, because I'm off guard with my children right now. Nigga, no. Mm -hmm. I don't know what can happen. Like I told you, I always look for bad for her. So I don't know what you really on. So just know, nigga. Mm -hmm. Damn, this shit is crazy. You're doing too much sneaky shit out the gate. I beat this sneaky shit as soon as I walked in there, motherfucker. But that's because we your fans, nigga. We want to be disrespectful. You don't be, you being disrespectful. How you, you should have just did it out the gate instead of the sneaky. Hey, bro, you owe your head, yeah, bro. Before I even grabbed the bucket. Hey, bro, you mind taking a picture? Come on, let's do it right quick before I go in here. Mm. Not while I'm in here. Hey, you, what baby doll you on? You on the Cabbage Patch Kid? Hey, bro, got that. And you just pop up out of the blue on me. I'm trying to pick out my back turn. I don't know what you're trying to do. Mm. Nah, that makes sense. Yo, so I opened the, I opened the show with saying these Atlanta niggas are spoiled. Because mm -hmm. 
it's like like y'all niggas Atlanta really took over hip hop. Damn. We do got the lane right now, for sure. But y'all niggas are still here. Like don't leave, like never live. I can't say that, but I'm saying like you could see, you could walk outside to a restaurant and see a TI. Oh yeah, for you sure. You could go see yeah, like, yeah, you, like yeah. But see, we we like I don't know, I can't say we. I'm I ain't leave Boulder Chris till I made it with music. So I didn't start leaving Boulder Chris to um 07, 06, 07, 08. My whole life, I never flew, never rode a Greyhound, don't know how to catch no Amtrak. So, and then being an East Side nigga, I ain't leaving the East Side to even go to the West Side. And y'all probably have some of the best soul food ever. But I ain't going way over there mm. for that fucking food. I just go to McDonald's right here. Bro, you... You got too many hits to be a nigga, nigga like this. <laughs> like, you a straight nigga. <laughs> like, it's like, you got to grow the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. Hey, right God. now, I, I still GPS in Atlanta. I've been here, I'm 42. Man, 42 years, I'm GPS in downtown. If I if I, if I got to leave Boulder Crest area, I am GPSing it. Yo, give me some give me some Atlanta history. Hold up. First of all, first question. What's the, uh, the characteristics of an east side Atlanta nigga? You got to be like right in that East Atlanta, Boulder Crest, Flat Shows area to be like a Zone Six nigga, and the Kirkwood, Edgewood. That's all Zone Six. But describe an East Side nigga, a uh, East Side Atlanta nigga. A real East Side Atlanta nigga like me, man. We ain't too tough conversing with no whole bunch of niggas. We ain't going to the West Side Club. We got the Lee Room Moreland, and that motherfucker open Tuesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we in the motherfucker on all select days. Yeah, we going to uh, chit chat right down Kellen Road. We ain't going. I probably went to Pool Palace one or two times with a record label I was with, and we were trying to promote some music. Mm. But me going to Crucial and shit faithfully, no, we not doing. That's too far to drive. Plus, we going to drink something. We liable to get whipped over by the time coming back drunk. You know it's crazy because this is inside detail, but from outside, you know what they say about Atlanta. Mm. Every city that's like trying to be a major in in music, we like we gotta be like Atlanta. They stick together. Damn, that's what we say. Like, cause y'all got it's so many artists that emerge down here. Down, down here so we see it like, man, them niggas stick together. And you like, man, Hell we ain't nah. even going to the west side. Yeah, nah, for what? Who I know over there? Going to pick Pat Man up from Campton Road other than that. But hurry up, but we gotta get the fuck off of over here. So from your experience, how did Atlanta win like this? Like, cause y'all really hit the scene. What was it, 90 when I feel like when uh Outcast, when Andre 3000 went, what was the one of the award shows, mm -hmm. it was like, um, we got some shit, we got something to say. Right? Okay. The South got something yeah, to say. So, yeah. What was that? 90 no, I don't know. I don't know. Give me a line. South got something. That had to be in the uh, Ozone Awards. That's it was like early 2000s. The That's Source what, Awards. Yeah. It was like oh, 90. It was early 90s or late 90s. Late 90s, early 2000s, something like that. From your experience, mm -hmm. how did Atlanta hit the scene? And how, how was y'all able to breed so many artists after artists after artists and eventually start taking over the hip-hop game? I, I want to say it's, just, it's talent all over. But like every hood gonna have, and there's so many hoods in Atlanta. There's just so many zones, and then you got the east side, and you got the south side. So if if I can just think about it, each down the side got down there anywhere from five to ten artists that tried to make it out. Maybe not all ten went, but majority of them did. You know what I'm saying? So that's a lot of groups just from that side. But how? Every city got five, ten niggas from different hoods trying to make it. Mm. From your experience, I'm just curious. Like, well, how was you? How was you able to get lit? Shit, I worked my, I worked make the chart say, hey, four five years. I put that bitch on four five different mixtapes before it caught on. I just used to remember going, put my CDs in stores, leaving fucking flyers and postcards in your window at the club, and performing at all the open mics, throwing money, going to Magic City, throwing money on Magic, going to Blaze on Thursday, throwing the money in Blaze. Going to Scrokers, going to Pin Up. We just going around throwing money, performing the music, whether we had to pay the DJ or he letting us do it free. 
or we get on some weed and buy them a drink or something. We make I'm making sure and I'm performing. So I I got on more here to say open mic and my whole family and me knowing everybody or the niggas I do fuck with. I got them calling in on radio requesting my song. Mm. Hey, if you got to change your voice, do what the fuck you got to do. I need we need to attack this number and tell them to play fucking I'm getting money. So you can't really pinpoint when Atlanta started to like bleed into the world outside of Atlanta. Because I, I feel like I heard some people say the Big Meech movement. I went around. I was around, but I went. Yeah, that was. Milf in yeah. Fort Ward area. Even though I did like a few years in Fort Ward, but when I did my years in Fort Ward, it wasn't BMF at the time. Damn. So you just came from like hustling mm-hmm. in the ground running. Yeah, for sure. I slept on the wall in Fort Worth for half a year. Wait, what you mean? What that mean? Slept on the wall. Like standing up? It's, nah, it's a fucking big ass wall, nigga. I'm on that motherfucker. Oh, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, nigga, I slept on the wall in Fort Worth for, for like half a year. Then my buddy JB, Josh, uh, let me come live with them for a little minute. Because see, Boulder Crib was too slow for me at that time. I couldn't make no money. I tried to find something different. But my buddy Mun. Lamont introduced me to Fort Wood, and once I went to Fort Wood, I'm like, ooh, shit, this shit way fast pacer than Boulder Chris. Curious, you said we could talk about back in the day shit. How big were you in the streets? I was just normal plain giant type nigga. I wasn't no nigga, fucking. I'm not flat, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I wasn't like no, that. I wasn't no Frank Lucas type nigga. Hell, yeah, nah, I ain't. Nah. I so how would you get? How did you get so much? Like, why would people respect you so much in the streets? Maybe from watching me from fucking. I think I got in got in the street at sixteen. Yeah. I had been fourteen, fourteen or sixteen. Started started off knocking on doors for a dollar. Then got in front of my first fifty slab and shit never looked back from there. Wait, what is that? A fifty slab. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck like, is that? So so shit you can make some money off of. <laughs> <laughs> you find it to even fit that pole to make a hundred and pay your fit, and now I got <laughs> Yeah. Hey, what the fuck is that? <laughs> okay. And then it was just up from there. Yeah. Do you think. On the ground running from there. So you was in the streets, you made money in the streets. Do you think the music industry, I asked it before, do you think the music industry makes it hard for young niggas to not be in the streets? Because I feel like. When you in the streets and you get solidified in the streets, mm-hmm. the the music industry accepts you, or you get it's like you get more popular in the industry. True, off the streets. Yeah, right? yeah, they, they, that's what they actually often look for. Yes, you got kids. You got mm-hmm. you got sons. I got two little girls. You got two girls. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you got kids, so not even it don't have to be a son. But understanding that and knowing that you got kids, what is your outlook on that? Because it's like it's kind of promoting you to. Be in the streets because mm-hmm. it's like if you ain't nobody in the streets, then we don't even care about your music. Damn. Almost that fucked up, but you know it is what it is for you. And the way you put it, it's somewhat true, but it is what it is. You can go and work a job. We ain't telling you get in the street and make your money. You can go and work a real nine to five and make some real cheap. But anybody listen to no nigga that's working on nine to five? True. <laughs> <laughs> true. You got a point there, but. But if you work the nine to five, stack the cheese, and when you pop out ready to pop your shit and you got the money, they wouldn't get three folks about the job. They just see the cheese. So, you know what's messed up about this, bro? <laughs> Niggas is rapping to potentially make money. True. But you're saying that you got to have money to be a rapper. You do. Unless you get signed out the gate. I was the one of the ones, unfortunately, I didn't get signed out the gate. I had to utilize my own money first. And then some industry money came. Ain't no telling how many X, Y, Z dollars of my own I had to use. Mm. Of my own shit that I had to go and bust my ass for and dodge penitentiary, all kinds of shit, and put there. So you making music now. You still OJ the Juice Man. I'm pretty sure it's niggas out there who look at you how I look at you. Mm. Is it, are you trying to get features from like, Artists in the industry, or you like you're not really rocking with it. How are they treating you? Are they are they rocking with you? Are you, are niggas picking up the phones when you calling? Are you even calling? <laughs> I'm really curious. I'm like, some nigga fuck with me, some nigga fake as hell. 
Some niggas just some damn liars. But goddamn, it is what it is. Like I said, I'm going to ask you one or two times, goddamn, from now I'm going to go on and move around. Because now at that point, I feel like I'm big. There's no way I'm talking to OJ the Juice Man. You feel exactly how I feel. Like, yeah. Nigga, I hate these niggas. Like, boy, I, I hate them, boy. But I ain't going to salt you down. I ain't, you feel me? Y'all move how y'all move. You know what I'm saying? I just hate the sucker shit niggas do. It's no way you feel the same way I feel, nigga. Like, I feel like I hate, like, I, am I lying? Like, I say this all the time. Like, these niggas be fake, and I'm just not, I don't. I don't know how to be fake. Bro, there's no way. I'm not faking with you so I can get an opportunity. No, nigga, I'm fuck you, nigga, go no to hell. dick and kissing no way for Facts. It. You can go on with that shit. Man, I see you never, Rary. <laughs> Facts. This is you feel me? Straight up and down. But, I mean, but you got, like, so... Sukiyana called you. Mm -hmm. Did she make that call or? Um, well, in actuality, when me Suki did hit, but at the same time, Jay Kelly put the play together when she hit for us to connect inside of the studio, and I just pulled up, and then we've been fucking friendship since then. Mm. Did you? Did you? Back in the day, would you see that like some 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 as small as your ad libs could be the something that. Made your legacy live for so long. Not the ad lib, cause when I was trying to create the motherfucker, I ain't know what the hell I was doing. I just was trying to make, um, make my music bouncy, to where I'm putting the A's in spots where it's kind of blanket. It's just open pockets. But if I put the A's there, it gonna make your ass got now. Hey, hey, okay, okay, damn. You know what I mean? So I was just trying to make it crunky, I guess, or bouncy. Mm. Cause where I'm from, we used to we ride around and do everything in our cars. So we in the car, you got four twelves in the back, you got one oh fours, you got six by nine, you got eights in the doors. So you and that motherfucker slamming, y'all be in that bit four deep in the box Chevy. Everybody in that motherfucker, you behind her at the red light, you just see four heads in the car like this. You don't know what we listen to. You hear the bow, 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 bow. You know what I mean? But that's just how we came, you know what I'm saying? So when I felt like I was going to try to rapping, I just want my shit bouncing how we used to bounce to riding around the Master P mm. or riding around the 3 Sit Mafia or riding around the UGK when we got a pocket full of stone. We in the motherfucker at the red light whipping on 24 in rim, $4,000 paint, probably spent about 3000 in music, probably bought the car for 80 dimes are hard. You feel me? <laughs> Why you keep talking about this drug shit to a nigga? I'm just episode? saying that. That's, that's, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Niggas gonna be like, this nigga green. I ain't green, but. Nah, green. hell nah. Hell yeah. nah. We know what the hell going on. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, bro. So, all right. So, that's kind of like your introduction to music, right? Mm -hmm. But now you're like, bro, it's almost 20 years ago. You're a different True. man. True. Like when you making the music now, do you feel forced to kind of like give people what they used to? Nah, I'm giving them force. I'm forced to give y'all either what I seen, saw, or doing. Mm. So you don't feel like you have to do those same ad libs. You don't feel like because that's how we know you. Yeah, I feel like if I change that up, then I might well just hang it up. Mm. I got to stay OJ the Jew, man. Give the ad lib, give the trap mode. Traptivity type music. Hey, is you really cranky, bouncy, make some money. So, do you feel like you can ever grow if you gotta continue to give? I I, I have grown. I'm I'm rapping what I'm rapping. Mm -hmm. It ain't that same shit that I rapping then, but it's still iterated to that same style. That's just what I know. I can't come in and say, hey, since I'm five or two, I'm gonna be rapping like goddamn. Red man tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, and I ain't never rap like that. I mean, I'm going to have to use a whole fucking encyclopedia to learn these big ass words. Mm. Speaking of that, that's funny. That's a great transition. Because I was about to ask you about T.I. Speaking mm -hmm. like encyclopedia. That nigga know his shit. <laughs> but no, so I was he talking. He done read, read several dictionaries. <laughs> Facts. For sure. He had to read like. Ain't no way you know them words at the top of your head. Like Dictionary, that. Bibles, and some more shit. Yeah. But so again, I was talking. Shout out to Wayne O again. We talking, and I was talking about why don't people give respect to legends? And I mentioned Ti, but mm -hmm. now you're here, and I feel like you're one of those legends as well. 
And he was saying that um, he thinks that it's hard for people to grow in this hip hop industry. True, true. And like the moment T.I. kind of did his reality show with his family and he showed him as a man, mm -hmm. as a father, and not like the rubber band man, mm -hmm. T.I. with the guns, mm -hmm. it kind of took away from his image. And I'm like, that's fucked up because that should be the main reason why we support the nigga. Like exactly. he's a great father. He's a fucking husband. He's mm -hmm. like, he's like, but it's like that same thing is part of the reason why some people might have shied away. And that's why I was asking Damn. you, do you think you can, is it hard to grow in this space when we know OJ the Juice Man as this wild nigga and this nigga in the streets, but now you're trying to make music now. And like, you might not be doing that. I'm about to go to Walmart with my damn family. True. Exactly. Ah, uh, damn, that's hard to say. So I should be rapping about going No, I'm not saying yeah. you should. I'm just yeah. asking, do you think it's mm. hard that if you wanted to grow or show people that, yeah, I'm a father now, I'm I'm a man of character. I, I like to play the game. Like, I'm not into that shit. Yeah, true. I don't know. If you put it that way, damn. You never thought about I mean, it like yeah, that. Yeah, uh-uh. Mm. My brain ain't processed it all the way for me to say something. I don't fucking know. Because mm. I ain't never really looked at it broke down like that. No, I mean, that's something that maybe you could think about later. Mm. It's not even for now. Damn. Cause that's I, a I, way to put it, though. Damn. Mm. What, what, what do you, when you think of a legend, what do you, what comes to mind? Mm, a legend, someone that made a stain or a name in the game for itself. That's still le living. Well, it ain't even saying considered as a living. The legend is someone that made a stain in the game that elevated his shit from nothing to something. They grasped a whole worldwide broad vision of fans that recollect the shit he spent on the music on the, in the music. Like OJ the Juice Man. Shit, I don't know because I'm fucking OJ, so I just know goddamn. I don't know, cause Nigga, you know I ain't experienced none of the uh, Lamborghinis and Ferrari. So now I'm fucking but you 20, 10 million up. But you ain't just you ain't. I ask you what is a legend to you? Yeah, you ain't named none of that. True, you right. You said somebody that came from nothing yeah. put a stain yep. on yeah, a game exactly. that everybody exactly. And that's why I'm like, I mean, mm. you almost in a source, not even almost. You created a sound that was different. And again, not bringing up like Gucci intensity, but at a time where we were listening to Gucci, mm -hmm. you didn't sound nothing like Gucci. No, nah, exactly. So that says more about the status or the name you made for yourself. Self. Okay. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. We've yeah. seen people come with, with uh, artists like shit. We've seen G-Unit. We've seen 50 Cent, right? Okay. Uh, we seen Jay Z Rockefeller. Like we seen people come, we seen people go, right? Okay. And I feel like you came next to somebody that was running the summers, exactly, and you stood out. Damn, I never looked at it like that. You was crazy. There's no way you never thought about that. I never looked at it like that. You not dead ass right now. Nah, dead ass here for sure. I never looked at it that way. Is it me? <laughs> I'm just like, am I crazy over here? <laughs> nah. Am I bro. glazing too much? Like, I'm just asking. Like, nah. like, am I, I'm, I'm just being real. Like, nah, nah, you <laughs> fucking me up though. Like, now that I think about it, nah, I ain't never, I ain't never, I ain't never look at it that way. Mm -mm. When you put something out on the internet, how is the response? Give and take. It be good. I get some bad comments. I'm a comment reader. Mm -hmm. It be somewhat good. Somewhat bad. You read in the comment. What is the majority? Why? What do you? Think? A majority of the masses in the comment. What are they be saying? Good. It be good, but then some be like, "Bro, the old ass chain." Mm. But you still got all the old ass shit. Or damn, bro, I thought you died. What the fuck? That's crazy. Niggas talk about the chain, but you still wear it. Yeah. That's clearly something that stood out to you. So, if you don't like negative comments, why you still wear it? Because I paid my cheese for it. <laughs> Why you were just like, I don't know, uh, you could turn it in, get it melted, it turned to a this different shit, chain. it was already melted, it turned it in. <laughs> okay. It was my Brit Squad chain. I melted that motherfucker down and made a new 32 NTP. 
But folks don't, who on the outside that don't know, they always, but that old that chain thing is my orange and white chain when it's actually a whole different chain. Mm. But, but I ain't the one to be arguing with you on the internet. Why the fuck, nigga, this a whole new chain, pussy ass, nigga. You want to pull up to my jewelry, man, and see the receipts? <laughs> Niggas is doing that though, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> too much. You might have played a video game with me, God damn. God damn. I don't like to waste my time like that. Now, if I'm wasting my time, I'm on a goddamn video game. <laughs> Facts. But trying to investigate and do homework for four days and by the nigga chain, nigga, fuck you, nigga. Facts. But I'm going to help you because next time, let's make it to the point that next time you play the game, you ain't wasting your time. True. But I've been wasting my Call of Duty time right now, say 1906 19, hours of playtime. Bro, you could be making some serious money. My Grand Theft Auto 2800 hours of game time. So, okay, so music wise though, when you when you put something in the in the world, music wise now, how are the fans responding? Are they like, yo, we've been waiting? Yeah, I been get I be getting that my my day ones. My day ones. Just your day ones? I can't really say the day ones and I just be you know I see the name okay. more more like often. Like fans, they yeah, want yeah. fans, okay. More often than some of the other names. Cause I look at the name, I look at the comment, and I keep scrolling. I just compare. I'm a comparing ass nigga. That's the thief of joy. We know that. Um, <laughs> I just like to compare shit. Damn, son. I'm because I'm just curious. Like I'm just like, bro. Like I'm thinking it, it would be not easy, but easier because you already got some, some clout. Like you owe it. Yeah. Man. You ever thought about making creating a podcast? Mm. Cause you see a lot of niggas that like had some buzz back in the day they got starting a podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. and niggas is loving it. And that shit going crazy. Yo, sure. you could do a podcast, and you could have like anybody you want to pull up. They probably would come to your podcast before they get your feature. Mm. As if my podcast is small or already booming, bro. If you came up with a podcast, right? Am much like you probably could get some of like you because you from Atlanta, you can get some of the legendary Atlanta niggas to pull up. And like talk Atlanta stories. Mm. And then it's gonna get booming. And then when they get booming, you can get niggas like Jeezy. Niggas like, I don't know, mad Atlanta niggas. Like, I'm pretty sure the young niggas would pull up too. True. Damn. I ain't never thought about no shit. Like, not in the park, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo, you, you look at Cameron, Mace, Gilly the Kid, Nori, Nigga boom. Joe Button. It definitely boom. Definitely. Make the trap A. Hey. What up, man? It's OJ the Juice, man. Welcome to Make the Trap. Hey! Oh, <laughs> make the Trap. Hey! Nah, I'm just saying, bro. But see, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them niggas. I don't know, man. I'm friendly, but I ain't friendly once I see some flaw shit and you send on my podcast and you a whole, whole ass nigga. Sound like more views than me. Mm. <laughs> Sound like more money than me. Mm. Just call niggas out. Mm. Next, nah, nah, nah. Because next thing you know is. OJ Juice Man on Shave Room fighting the guests. You, you see, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Nigga got his ass pistol whipped in the motherfucker. <laughs> you still on the same shit, bro? I'm thinking. <laughs> you keeping it real. <laughs> it's going to turn out bad. It ain't going to go good. Bro, it's been 20 years, bro. You still on the same shit. It's going to turn out bad. <laughs> Yo, all right. Okay. What, 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 can, what, what can we look forward to, man? We can go ahead. Um... Shit, what you I'm, got coming? What you got? Oh, I got already. the uh, two solid record out right now, produced by KC, the Beat Monster. We've been promoting, going heavy on it. Um, I got a proclamation from Zone what District Four, Fulton County. Mm. Um, like four or five days ago from that, I got induced into the Trap Museum. Why they, they give you a proclamation? Uh. For the stain I made in the community and me giving back and my, uh, I can't, I'm trying to be professionally correct with my wording. Bro. Like, <laughs> but then the word working, might come bro. out fucked up. Yeah, it ain't like, working, bro. That just, word don't go with that. What don't be trying professional, to say. bro. You just ain't professional, bro. Just but it was it. like just uh, coming to me on uh, fucking my ad libs in the game. Being a real worldwide notoriety for the ad libs. Niggas gave you a proclamation for your ad libs. For my fucking ad libs. What the fuck? 
I ain't never, we ain't never know, we ain't never know no shit like that exists. Yeah, me neither. But I ain't hey. never know what a fucking proclamation was. I had a Ruben had, <laughs> the hell is a proclamation? Hey. I don't know nothing about this shit. I ain't been in school in 30 years. Okay, so, hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that on purpose. <laughs> All right, whatever. All right, so, the proclamation, what community work you been doing? A lot. I used to give back to the kids, um, do Boulder Crest Days, book bag drive, uh, school supplies, uh, clothing, fucking bouncy house. I used to do all Oh, you was a real live philanthropist. Give away bike, uh, bicycles, buy all the bicycles out of Walmart. Um, Christmas time, give away the bicycle for the kids. You used to buy bicycle. all the bikes out of Walmart. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, used to rent the... Uh, Option right now on Forest Park type shit and give all the kids toys and bikes. And if your mama wasn't really able to get you shit, you can pull up there and we had something for you. Damn. Okay, so you got the project that you're working on now. Mm hmm. Uh, well, I'm working on it. I got it ready. I just ain't putting no name on it. I wanted to do like two singles. Because, you know, normally I'm the mixtape man. Mm hmm. I got down there, filed or some mixtapes out. So uh, instead of me just. Flooding them straight out the gate with a project, no promotion on that. Let me try one or two singles with videos, and then in the midst of that, hit them with the project because I'm letting them, I'm standing in their face, and I'm letting them know it's on the way instead of me just bam, there it is, go get it. Okay, so what do you, what's different then? Because like last time you said the promotion, the marketing wasn't mm -hmm. up the par. Yeah, I was, how just, you, how I you, was just dropping in. Okay, without, so now you doing. Social media promotion, blog site promotions, just going in a way I can uh, out lance into like people I fuck with. I never been a communicative type person like everybody with me. Hey, y'all make sure this the date. Y'all put it in y'all else. If y'all don't do it, that's just on y'all. Mm -hmm. I don't give three fucks. It's my shit, so why would y'all care? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you got to be a team player. What's the what's what's the most enjoyable part about this ever for you? Mm, me knowing the game they go wrong. Let me ask you though. I gotta ask. Can't that hurt sometimes? Cause I feel like sometimes your knowledge won't allow you to get into fuck shit, but the fuck shit that you got into when you're ignorant was the same shit that kinda helped you elevate. Nah, not they go around cause I know what to look for, they go around. I ain't I ain't doing the bullshit out the gate for anything. Mm. I'm rushing into it. Damn, how do you see this? I'm just, bro. I, I told you I got me. How do you see this going? Like, if this best case scenario, like, how do you see you dropping this tape? You still are selling a million? Like, just curious. Like, oh, yeah, and real, and, for real. And that's how I say, I don't give a fuck about doing no me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I don't give a fuck about doing no me. I just once I put my shit out, it really be for the people. I don't really care about making super amounts of money off the shit. I just be want folk to hear what the hell I'm talking about, and if it help you in your life, not saying do what I'm saying I'm doing in the song, but if it help you in your life, or you down bad, or you don't know what way to go, you got some money, you don't know where to put the money, or you need some money and ain't got no money, I'm just getting you the ropes of doing this shit. Mm. That's dope, bro. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. man come on, you know I got you, brother. Oh, that's sure good. That was good. Good talking to you, man. Getting, man, that's real. Getting to know you for real, man. Um, hopefully, I can help in any type of way. Hopefully, this can can help get some motion behind a project. Okay. I mean that. And if you ever, I don't know, want to come back, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you feel yeah, me? I'm like y'all need help back. with the setup. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a I'm man, back. so I already Can't said that. Back. Yeah, man, that's my word, man. This shit was good. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Like I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, nah, I mean, it was hard. I know my hard. niggas back home. They gonna love this shit, man. Yeah, that hard. Fuck what you heard. Baltimore. I used to go in Baltimore. I, I used to be in Baltimore on them shows. This shit had to be in fucking oh nine. Yep. Tracy. Tracy something. Okay, Tracy Icon. Yeah, Come on, Tracy. Yeah, I'm posting yeah, this and yeah, I'm sending this yeah, to you, Tracy, nigga. That's the only person you bring me about. If it wasn't Tracy booking me, I wasn't coming to Baltimore. Yeah, bro. See, I graduated from high school in 2010. Mm. So, like, those were like prom years, nigga. Like, mm. Tracy is still in Baltimore throwing Doing promotion. Big ass shows. See what I'm saying? She was the shit back then. She was the shit back then. And she still the shit. Oh, yeah, that's hard. How, how was those shows back in Baltimore? I remember when, my first one when Tracy done came and got it from the airport. She had police with her. And uh, 
Police wouldn't like, I don't know if he was in detail, I think he was in security type clothing, but in the van riding with us on the way to the spot, he said, don't y'all get now ho out there club. You know, we big in age. Mm. That's what the police said? Yes. Damn. He telling us on the way to the spot, but don't get now ho out there club. We got a high percent in age. Damn. Everybody in the van he fucked yeah. the whole mood up. God damn. He's he down there want to fly back tonight. <laughs> Why would you say that to the guest? Like, you fucking... He must ain't get no ass. Oh, no. He, he spooked us, though. He couldn't get no... He was a no pussy ass getting nigga, bro. Back like to the hotel sleep. Hey, we got this motherfucker <laughs> in the red eye. I can't even post this shit on Instagram to promote. <laughs> I ain't going to part of one. <laughs> Damn. Why would the security say that? I said, boy, he fucked us up. He damn sure fucked us up. He had us scared from then on. So bro. did y'all even enjoy? Could you enjoy? No, nah, we still had fun. But when we started drinking, police shit out of our head. We even though we ain't, we know not to fuck with the hoes in him. <laughs> but we finna have some goddamn fun. Why they doing my city like that, man? So y'all ain't getting no hoes. Yeah, no, nah, we don't want them. <laughs> But that was only one time. Did you go back? Yeah, we. I think I went back. Tracy bought me three times in in my whole career of Tracy booking me. All three times, good ass times. And then I started doing. I think I started doing DC out to Baltimore. I don't know how close DC is to Baltimore, but I think we. we that's when and because in DC we get to DC, they playing some shit. I don't know what the they call it. Go go music. Yeah, I ain't never heard that kind of shit. Hold up. Can we connect me to the... I don't even know how you parted to that kind of shit. Never mind. We don't got to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hold up. Hold up. Nah, don't connect. Don't connect. I wonder if she's going to answer. This is crazy. Who would have thought of this shit? Ah, oh, she's not going to answer the phone. You reached the voicemail that Tracy sent for me. Damn. Mm-hmm. Damn, I was gonna ask her about that. that. Guaranteed, she was like, "Yeah, I'm the only motherfucker to bring OJ to you, man." She was, cause nobody else booked me but fucking Tracy, and she was big as hell at the time. Still, she got her own own club out that motherfucker now, called Dang. Iconic. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you gotta say that. Uh, <laughs> can't wait to go oh, back. Yeah, that was yeah, that was your yeah, cue, yeah, nigga. Yeah, can't <laughs> wait to go back. Yeah, the Iconic, I'm on the way. <laughs> I am on the way. <laughs> Yo, are you still having shows though? Like yeah, hey, yeah, I be having. Uh, I be booked like a fool. I might have anywhere from three to four to. It depending on the month though. If it's like a holiday month, I'm a boom. Regular months, maybe two, three shows a month. I want. I just. I just want to try this one more time, bro. She probably don't. Huh? Oh shit, my. Right, we gonna wrap up, man. Damn. Ah, oh, fuck it. We still, mm. but whatever. Damn, police officer. Mm. That's some police ass yeah, shit to do. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess maybe he was looking out for you. I guess, <laughs> yeah, like, I guess. I right? Know. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Who ain't hey, hey, Atlanta high in hey, 80s? God yeah. damn. Like, nah, not at that time. Y'all was, y'all was top tier. Top two? Top tier. Oh, top tier. Between one and three. Damn. Oh, that's her right here, man. She probably like, why didn't you call us so many times? You got OJ right here, Tracy. Just wanted to say, hey, baby. Been a long time. Bring me back. Facts. <laughs> Tracy can probably, I haven't heard from you so long. Facts. This is crazy, bro. This is insane, bro. Nigga, hop, imagine you getting out of the car. You going to a show and you, I'm assuming niggas is fucking hoes on on when on your shows. <laughs> a nigga say, just don't fuck no hoes here, bro. We high in age. It's like, god damn, you just fucked up my hoes. I don't know. even want to perform. I wouldn't even want to perform. I don't want that back in. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. I ain't gonna lie. What you told me, shit, like you could have. <laughs> shit, fuck, fucking give me that cheese. Nah, facts, facts, facts. All right, I just ah, shit, hold my nuts back till I get back to Atlanta, goddamn. I'm, don't be horny tonight. Facts. How you tell a nigga don't be horny? You feel me? Only three. Damn, man. She ain't, I ain't, she gonna Make call sure when we wrap up. Make sure you take your melatonin. 
<laughs> Get your punk head to sleep, nigga. <laughs> nigga, it's crazy. Yo, we trying to get so we trying to get the promoter Tracy on the phone. I'm just wanna uh ask her about this experience, but mm. I think she might. Ah man, well, we might have to wrap up. OJ the juice, man. For the people that don't know, um, let them know how to follow you and everything, man. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Chit Talk, OJ the Juice Man, 32, the number 32. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Uh Jay, you don't look like you're excited right now. No, nah, my bad, man. I was yeah. trying to get him to answer the goddamn phone. He man, man. You, you don't look excited. That's because it's goddamn Damn. security. Yeah, you're a fucking piece of shit. He wasn't even. Oh, that should go right there. Here we go. I wanted to ask. If it cut off, yeah, we already ended. Oh, she working now. Yeah, she working now. She's a. First of all, you are you on the podcast on the J Hill podcast. You a legend. I'm talking to uh, OJ the Juice Man, and he said the only uh, he said the only person that booked me when I was when I was back hot was Tracy. I'm like, wait, Tracy Icon? Yeah. He like, yeah. <laughs> so I just want to ask you a question. So he he brought one. I want to know if you remember this. Was it the first time you said? I want to say the first time. The first time you booked him, right? You came and got him. Police escort, and the police tell this man. He said. Don't fuck with no hoes because we high in A's. Do you remember that? If he said it, I believe it. I remember it. Oh, my gosh. That's... But Tracy was the only person that brought me to Baltimore. Couldn't nobody else bring me booked.